Okay, welcome everybody. We're going to wait a couple more minutes to see if anyone else can show up. Very exciting. Is there a video on? Can online hear us? I can. Thanks. You guys hear me? Yes. Yep. I can as well. Yes, I oh, can hear We can hear you. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Can you see us? Yes. I can. Mm -hmm. You can? Okay. Yeah. yeah, you have two different ones. There's the host one, and then there's the Columbus office one. We can see the Columbus office. Okay. Did I tell that? Okay. We'll hold on that for a second. Okay. Um, 5B, 6A, 6B are vacated. 7A, Patrick Glasgow. He's excused. 7B, Jay Steinmetz. He is excused. Oh, Jay Steinmetz is here. On, on, oh, you online. are? I am. Okay. Online. Okay. Excellent. Online. 8A, Helen Gilson. She is excused. excused. 8B is vacant. 9A, James Barber. 9B, myself, Derek Strillo, present. 10A, Jeff Zweber. Here. I just saw that. Okay. 10B, Carl Farnham. Here. 11A, Tyrone Smith. Negative. 11B is vacant. 12A, Linda Comstock. I believe she's excused. She is excused. 12B, Dustin Nana. I'm here. 13A, Derek Taff. Taffy? Is it, I, I'm sorry. I, I butchered the name there. You're here. Taff. Okay. Taff. I'll, I'll try to remember that. Long A. Long A. Uh, 13 Bravo is empty. Nate Rockwell. But it was not moved. 14B, Joe Lloyd, also resigned but not completed online. 15A, Jennifer Flower, also resigned, not completed online. 15B, Chris Gill. Yep. 16A, Jason Sonnenschein. 
here. Okay. 16B, Steven Grossenbacher. That's a negative. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And with the resignations not being completed online, body is 22. So we have quorum barely. Having a quorum, we will move on to any conflict of interest disclosure. Hearing none, we will move on to the approval of the agenda. There are several corrections that will need to be made. Lacking a two-third uh, quorum that is required for action under the bylaw 315 uh, hearing procedure, uh, the hearing under bylaw 315 is not going to be possible today. It will be postponed. Point of order. Yes. Point of order. There's no mention of a two thirds quorum anywhere in the bylaws, the constitution or Robert's rules of order. The bylaw 200 states that a quorum is uh, a simple majority. And we're talking about the voting. We do not have enough people to potentially even consider voting. Uh, that's not what it says in the bylaws. The bylaws state that a quorum is a simple majority. Quorum for regular business is a simple majority. In order for any motion or executive session, in order for a motion under bylaw 315 to uh, have any disciplinary action taken, two thirds of the seated members of the body must vote for any action to in, any in, neg, action to be taken. If you would like to continue with the hearing, um, there would not be any action that could be taken. I feel, and it is my ruling, that it is in the best interest of the party to postpone the 315 hearing until a later date when we will have sufficient numbers of committee members present. You're making up the rules as you go along, Madam Chairwoman. <laughs> There is no there is no mention of a two thirds quorum anywhere in the bylaws. The bylaws state that a quorum is a simple majority, Madam Chairwoman. Um, I therefore is, would is need that, to dismiss that, the uh, three fifteen hearing. The the, it, I will take that as a challenge to the ruling of the chair. Is there a second? Yes, to it the is. Chair? I appeal the ruling of the chair. Thank you. Is there a second to the appeal? Hearing none, the ruling of the chair carries. We will be postponing any hearing under I bylaw. I therefore move to dismiss the 315 hearing because there is a quorum. And uh, I, I was here. I'm ready. Again. Again. Yeah. <clears throat> And once there again, Madam Chairwoman, there is a bias against me is showing. There's a motion to dismiss. I think you can dismiss an item that we're not at that point in the business. And we are not at that point in the business yet. We are currently on the agenda. I am suggesting a change to the agenda. And he has um, appealed that ruling. It has not been seconded. Therefore, the ruling carries. Um, we are not having a 315 today. Your motion is out of order. How many times am I going to have to go through this, Madam Chairwoman? You're not going through it today. You could resign. And order. so could you. Order. We've already established that the rules don't matter, Madam Chairwoman. If you're not bound by them, I'm not going to. I'm you not going to act as if I'm bound by you... them either, Madam Chairwoman. You're out of there order. Find someone to second your motion. Uh, yeah, out of order. This is about agenda. Move on. 
Yep. Out of Move order. on, Jason. Please remain. Keep in order. Uh, you please remain in order, matters. Madam Chairwoman. There is nothing in the bylaws that states. You will be out of order, out of order Madam this. Chairwoman. There's you nothing in the bylaws that states meeting. that there's a two-thirds majority quorum. That you a simple majority is meeting. a quorum, according to the bylaw 200. You will be removed from this meeting if you cannot maintain order. What are you going to do? Have your security guard come up here to Rocky River? I will mute you and remove you from the chat or from the meeting. <laughs> mute him, please. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. We are on approval of the agenda. Um, the only addition that I have made is uh, we were not able to complete the resignation of uh, Jennifer Flower uh, in the resignation of Central Committee members. So I have added her name under resignation of Central Committee members that we will, uh, in Section 5, business conducted between meetings. Are there other changes that are required from the floor, please? Madam Chair, there's also an uh, online motion to amend Bylaw 200 that did not complete, that needs to be addressed by this body. Okay, bylaw 200, that is in business conducted between meetings that was not completed. Correct. Correct? Yep. Okay. Um, that'll, be num that'll be letter C under number five. Okay. Um, give me a second, please. I believe also under new business, um, there has been interest in creating a Constitution and Bylaws Committee for the upcoming convention. Um, I would like to uh, ask for time to discuss and potentially fill. Do I have a new business one here? Is that number eight? Uh, I do not have new business. I do not have Looks new like business. Looks like number six. Oh. Constitution and Bylaws Committee report and recruiting. It's number six. Okay. My, my apologies. Okay. But no, you do not you do not have to do business anymore. Yeah. I thought we had enough to do today. <laughs> Fair enough. Are there any other amendments to the agenda? Can I have a motion to accept the minutes or not the minutes, the agenda as we have amended here? So moved. No, so and moved. Seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Nay. Nay. I heard you. Thank you. You only get one. Um, the next on the agenda is the approval of the minutes of the prior meeting. They are not available as our secretary had uh, has resigned. They will be posted as soon as they are available on the, um, not the chat, the, the, the CENTCOM thread, no, not thread, channel, channel, channel. We, we, will, we will post them as soon as they are available. Um, hopefully that will be within the next week. Okay, moving on to the business conducted between meetings. We had three resignations of central committee members. Joe Lloyd from District 14, Nate Rockwell from District 14, and Jennifer Flower, District 15. Um, the vote was uh, on the CENTCOM channel on the rocket chat, but uh, was, there was not a quorum and we did not have enough votes to accept the resignations. Mr. Nana. Uh, I would move to accept all three resignations. Also seconded. seconded. It has been moved and seconded. Uh, all in favor of accepting the resignations of the three committee members. Say aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you. That passes. Abstain. Appreciate that. Thank you, Jason. Okay. Um, I would also note that by operation of our bylaws, 
Jessica Pettigrew and Dyrone Smith have been absent from at least three meetings at this point and therefore have abdicated their roles as central well, committee. Point people. of order, abdication usually happens at the end of a meeting, the last meeting they missed. If anyone on the phone with them <laughs> and tell them that that could happen at the end of this meeting, please do so. If anyone's watching. Yeah, because that is not on my agenda. So, uh, resignation of executive committee member Patrick Glasgow uh, as vice chair of uh, the XCOM. That passed. Did that pass? Okay, just confirming. Thank you. Um, as a result of Jen Flowers also resigning, there is a vacancy on the XCOM as secretary yes. as well. Yes. I just wanted to point that out. Moving on, bylaw 200. Uh, it was posted in the CENTCOM chat. Um, I'm going to give Derek an opportunity to uh, present that and or read it so that you all understand what we were trying to do here. Okay, so for, for discussion purposes, as we just had to clear three resignations where we did not meet online quorum requirements of 60% of seated members, to accept a simple resignation, I wrote to add section 10 to bylaw 200. There was an amendment because I had mistaken one process for another. Uh, that amendment actually did clear quorum last night, but um, I'll read what I wrote. Oh, not to make this as a motion, correct? The motion is in progress. I'm just, okay. I, I'm out. So, by, by law 200, section 10, resignations. For electronic between meeting business, except for the position of central committee chair, a resignation submitted either in writing or by mail by any member or officer of the executive committee or central committee shall be accepted upon acknowledged receipt by the central committee chair and notice posted in the central committee electronic forum. In case of resignation by the Central Committee Chair, the same requirements as above apply, except it need be submitted to and acknowledged by the Central Committee Vice Chair. The receiving and acknowledging officer shall notify the Central Committee Secretary for the purpose of recording minutes and the LPO IT Director for the purpose of updating the party website and electronic forum access. The Central, if a Central Committee Secretary position or the IT Director position are vacant, other officers or directors who can act in that capacity will handle these responsibilities. Resignations from any Central Committee or Executive Committee member that occur during in-person Central Committee meeting shall be accepted by the Chair and noted in the minutes. Point of information, is that the proper thing I said here? Possibly, are you requesting information? I just, I just want to ask, a, I just want to ask a simple question. Essentially, this means that if someone resigns, the presiding officers can accept the resignation without the rest of us having to get involved. Is that that the summary Correct. of what we're talking about? Correct. Fair enough. Yes. And, and and just for clarification, the reason I separated out the central committee chair is because that position is the presiding officer over CENTCOM and XCOM members. If that person resigns. I believe it falls to the vice chair until a chair is chosen. So if Trisha resigns, I have to, I have to be the presiding officer. And if anyone else, it's her problem. Is there, <laughs> may I ask again, now is there a process for succession, say if the chair resigns, it moves, you know what I mean, down the officer and so forth so that we don't have to, is that in, is that in there? That's not in this section. I don't know if we have a succession in no, the Constitution. rules would mean that the vice chair would immediately. The, the vice chair assumes the roles of the chair. Based on R.O. and R, yes. <laughs> Mr. Nana. So my question, Madam Chair, is if this motion reached quorum last night, do we even need to do this, or is this oh, motion passed? The motion for the amendment oh, made oh, okay. the quorum. So the amended motion is what's on the floor? Yes. The amended Understand. motion is what's on the floor. Excellent. I had originally put by unanimous consent during the in-person right. meeting right. instead right. of right. just accepted by the chair noted in the minutes. So, Makes sense. Okay. We are currently going to vote on the mm. 
amendment to. Well, the amendment's already passed. The amendment's already passed. Start it all over again. Not that we're going to follow the rules. Say again. I couldn't hear. We we couldn't hear online. I, that's all I'm asking for. I couldn't hear what was said. Yeah, who was that? Oh, then forget it. Okay, so we are currently amending bylaw 200 to add section 10. To add section 10. Okay. Will we we would I would like to take a roll call vote. Please. Okay. Uh, point of information, Mr. Kissick from 5A has joined the meeting. So we now have 13 of 12. 13 of 19. Uh, okay. So roll call vote. Joshua Toms. Aye. Trisha Sprankle. Aye. Drake Lundstrom. Aye. Don Kissick. Aye. Jay Steinmetz. Aye. James Barber. Aye. Myself, Derek Strelo, aye. Jeff Weber, Aye. Carl Farnham. Aye. Dustin Nana. Aye. Derek Tafe. Aye. Chris Gill. Aye. Jason Sonichin. Abstain. The amendment to bylaw 200 carries. Thank you. With 12 yeas and one abstention. Okay. Constitution and bylaws committee report and recruiting. Mr. Strelo. We don't have such a committee. We need to we form a committee. <laughs> All right. Um, is anyone interested in being a member of the bylaws? or the Constitution and Bylaws Committee. Mr. Strelo? Yes. Mr. Nana? No. Mr. Kissick? Mr. Glestrom? Yep. Mr. Gill? I'm good if you need me to. Oh, Lord. <laughs> That's fine. Walter, you're going to be a Barber. Barber. Happy to pitch in. Any of the online yeah. people interested? Jay Steinmetz. Steinmetz. Anyone else? Derek Tafe. Tafe. Wow. <laughs> Jeepers, creepers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's eight people. Is that more than we need? Yeah, uh, yeah I was going to say, point of information, we need to decide how big we want this committee to be. I suggest five. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm amenable to having my name. Okay, take off deal. That surprised me anyway. Okay, Mr. Nana. Uh, I was just going to ask how big we wanted the committee to be. That's all. Okay, I was hoping for five people. That's and so, so. Um, so shall we? Yeah. Madam Chair, may I have a quick sidebar with Mr. Lundstrom on this issue? Okay, we can stay at ease. Does anyone else have any input on to the number and? and I guess we can do seven, but it's going to be unwieldy. Yeah, just the trick is you want to make sure you're not going to have form issues and everybody can get on the phone right. or whatever. So I'm just, uh, Obviously. What is the overarching purpose for the committee? Like, are we going to review what's there, or is there are there do we have proposed changes on the floor? I mean, that's you will be you will be coming up with proposals. We are going to have a state convention next year where right. bylaws uh, and the constitution can be um, amended uh, or improved, hopefully, uh, and that will be the job of uh, your committee is to present. Um, uh, the, the, the potential uh, constitutional changes and bylaw changes. Just point of information for Mr. Steinmetz's benefit. Um, our, this, the party constitution can only be amended at convention. Correct. Uh, I remember that want, from last year. Yeah, but, but we will want bylaws with that since we're just getting it all done in one session. Because there's often interplay between the constitution and the bylaws, and we want them to be consistent. Uh, so that's why we put them all together. I, in one committee. So 
I apologize for wasting the face time. No, not at all. We we're we we're answering. No, no. I'm discussing. Okay. I'm going to withdraw my name from the committee. All right, now I'm down to six. You're down to six. That seems like a reasonable amount. Okay. Yeah, we. And is there anyone who would opt to be an alternate as opposed to a primary member? Uh, Derek takes to be an alternate. Kissick? I, I would be an alternate if it came down to it. Well, I, I'd like to choose five primaries and an alternate in case someone decides to resign or becomes uh, indisposed. So. That okay. seems reasonable to me. Okay. Trying to not have a vote. I see what we're doing here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really trying not to have a vote. Given um, the pace of resignations, that's probably I appreciate your uh, willingness to be an alternate. Um, Which one do you guys want to flip a coin for who the alternate is? Because then we only have four if you vote for me. You okay with flipping a coin? <laughs> Mr. Tate? Mr. Tate? Yeah, absolutely. Your, your honor, call it. Heads. It's heads. What's your choice? Alternate or main? Alternate or main? I'll, I'll stay alternate. Okay, all right, I'll see you. Cool, now we got five. Okay, we are now, I am appointing Derek Strelo, Dustin Nana, Don Kissick, James Barber, and Jay Steinmetz to the Committee for Constitution and Bylaws to have a presentation prepared for next year's convention. Mr. Tafe will be an alternate if one of you cannot complete your duties there. Thank you so much. That is good stuff. Um, next on our agenda is the LNC report from Dustin Nana. Oh, Lord. All right. <clears throat> Good times. Great. Great times. All right. So for those of you that don't know, I'm the Region 3 representative on the National Committee. It's Ohio, Kentucky, Michigan, and Indiana. Um, we had our last meeting in Louisville here in the region, actually, in September, the first weekend of September. Um, the biggest item uh, that took place was the suspension of the LNC secretary. Um, other than that, there's really not any pertinent information to give. Um, we had a little social in Louisville uh, with the Kentucky Party. The Kentucky Party just bought an office for the first time in like 20 or 30 years. So we have to get a round of applause for them. We're very excited. Um, Indiana uh, is currently looking for an office, uh, which, and they have plenty of money, so they're going to definitely have one soon as well. I don't know if Michigan has an office or not, but if so, I, we might be the only region to have every state to have an office, to my knowledge. So that would be right. cool. Um, really nothing else to report, but I'm free to take questions. How do I... Ask it. I'll just. Can I just ask? Yeah. yeah go ahead. Can you go over whatever I, I tried to read and look? You know about what was the with the the person who resigned or was removed, but it, it, there was not much in the way of specifics as to the reason, other than she said things that were unacceptable. That you know what I mean. There was no detail uh, behind any of it. So there is a document available on the public list that you can go through that has the charges. Um, that were brought up by certain members when they made the motion to remove. Um, it, it, I, it's on the Google gotcha. drive for the, for the email. I don't know if you know how to get to that or not. But, we can uh, probably make that available in the chat. Present we, yes. Okay. And, so, and I consulted with the chairs here in our region, and they were unanimous in voting no on removal. So that's the way I voted. Um, but uh, she did end up getting removed. Uh, it was just enough, just two thirds, just enough to remove her. Um, and she's in, currently in the process of an appeal. Um, so she will be taking it to the judicial committee, which is another body that we have nationally who reviews these kind of things. Um, and then the results from her appeal will be, it's a kind of a broad window. Anytime between now and like 60-ish days from now, we might be a little under that now. Um, but basically, you are right. The, the reason that she was removed was because certain members believed that, the, that she was conducting herself in a way unbecoming of an officer of the National Party. Um, she didn't like what she said, essentially, um, which is part of the reason why I think a lot of our chairs, well, all of the chairs here, thought it was silly and didn't want to vote to remove. 
And correct me if I'm wrong. She was at our convention, the last convention we had, correct? Uh, the last convention, I'm not sure I was at, possibly. I know she was at the one before that in 2018. In 2018, she was 100% here. I don't know about 2020. I missed that one. Um, but she was oh, for sure here. In yeah, no, she was. She was at she 19 was here. conference. She was at she 19 was at in Columbus, right? At the hotel. She was at I'm almost 19. certain. Toledo. 19 Toledo. She makes the rounds quite frequently um, since she's the secretary and everybody votes on her at the national convention in every state. Um, so she, I mean, she interfaces with the members quite often. So it's certainly possible. Like I said, I wasn't at 2020, but she was, yeah. she was not here this year. She was here in 19 for sure. And for sure in 18, I'm unsure about 2020. Members in the room are telling me she who is, was. So. Who was at 2020? She has pink hair, right? Or did had some yeah, pink she hair? She does. Yes. You can't miss she her. Was yes, at, she was at, and I'm pretty sure she was at the 2020. I, that's why I was asking. I had a couple conversations with her. Okay. For sure. I'm yes, trying that, to that confirm this is the, the right person. Yep. Absolutely. That was her. Any other questions, comments, concerns? You just want to tell me I suck. That seems silly to me to be removing someone for speaking their mind. I don't disagree, and neither did the chairs in the region, but uh, the vote did not go our way. You did a good job. Well, thank you. I agree. Actually, I yes, sir. there was one other thing that had to do with um, uh, financially benefiting from her position. Um. So it was, it was a stretch. I'll tell you what the, what the stretch was, okay. is that she has a monetized YouTube, and therefore, because she was discussing the LNC on her YouTube, somehow she was profiting from her position. No. That, was the, no. that was the connection made. Well, the hard thing is that money for money money for money for money money for running. So then, well, if you fundraise for running, you know, it's... Yeah. It, 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 the 20 bucks she got. Was, right, yeah. All those millions of years. I can tell you, I've never taken a dime to, to run for region rep. I, I spend all my own money to go to conventions. I don't ask for money to go to any events. Actually, that's on you, really. That's on me. But I choose to do that because I don't think that, that's just a point. That actually brings up an interesting point. Um, you know, for those of us who are involved at the county level I, and in other things, right, in activism at school boards and so forth, you know, what in terms of the rules – what constitutes, you know, you know, I, I've just tended not to mention any of my roles in the, as a member of the party whenever I speak officially on behalf of myself or anybody else around here. But that, that brings up an, uh, monetizing aside. Right? When can we and when can't we speak and, and how do we make sure we're is that you understand where I'm going here? Like, how do we know? Yeah, there, there are no rules. If you're talking about state rules, there are no rules against it. Um, but, you know, it's kind of just use your best judgment, which it sounds like you already are. Uh, yeah. You know. the, so no, we have, you, an officer of the National Party, though, can be removed for any reason. They can, you know, if, the, if two-thirds of the LNC decides, I don't like the shirt you wore, and two-thirds right. of the LNC is going to vote to remove because of that, theoretically they can. So that's where that comes from. They can, so, and then the certain member of, number of members decided that that was conduct unbecoming of an officer of the National Party. Therefore, they chose to remove. Yes, Mr. Lundstrom. Can you give a brief update on the national CRM? Oh, yeah. I can tell you about the national CRM. So the national CRM got $10,000, I believe, at this last meeting. Um, and uh, a fellow who lives in our region, some of you may know him by the name of Ken Molman, um, down in Kentucky. Yeah. A lot of you are telling me who's that in jest. Um, no, he's very involved. He's come up and helped us several times. He's, he was actually at our conference this year um, and spoke. He is kind of the volunteer who drives that project. And then there's a, a fellow by the name of Andy Burns, who is our actual contracted IT guy, who um, gets paid to help with that. But he has recently, we got 10000 and then immediately he started to turn around and buy stuff. What we're trying to do is become self-sufficient with our servers and stuff. We are upgrading. Um, and now, now you've got me into stuff, talking about stuff that I professionally have no idea about, but I'll do my best. Um, they're upgrading the server capacity, uh, upgrading the amount of RAM, um, and making things faster, I guess, is the, is the layperson way to say it. Um, and instead of having our servers through a third party, now we're going to have our own servers hosted at a site in, I believe it's going to be in Texas. I don't think that's final yet. But um, so, and it'll have like backup capabilities, like if uh, a hurricane hits, we're, we're good to go. Um, you know, if the power goes out, 
you know, it's going to be at a facility that does this specific, specific stuff, excuse me, um, professionally. Uh, and we won't, you know, we won't be the only people in that facility, but um, it's just making us, making it more secure um, and in, improving the overall function of the CRM. Uh, up, up putting states onto the actual CRM when a state says, hey, we'd like to join. Um, previously, it was taking days because they would have to, it was just so many files that they would have to upload. Um, and now it's, it takes like minutes. So essentially, it's just making everything streamline, everything faster, um, working out kinks. So yeah, 10, 10 grand to the CRM. Most of it's going to equipment to make things better. He drove to Maryland um, earlier this week, I think, to pick up physical equipment. Uh, and then he'll probably be driving to Texas to deliver it because he doesn't trust the mail. With, with that kind of stuff. Uh, but, uh, yeah, uh, long story short, CRM is being upgraded. Uh, we here in Ohio don't have a national CRM. I won't use my bully pulpit to comment on that. Um, <laughs> but uh, we, uh, we have our own system that Jim, our current chair, generously um, constructed himself, which is actually fairly similar to the national system. Um, previous to that, we were using a, a system called Nation Builder, which just became unwieldy and expensive. So, anyone else? Um, while, while while you have the pulpit, can you speak to anything around the whole New Hampshire chair switch and all of that, or is that was that not discussed? Today? Oh boy, uh, that was well. Uh, yeah, I guess that was technically discussed. So we had an investigative committee um, that we appointed a while back um, that uh, was investigating the whole thing. Their findings were, in short, that Joe Bishop Henchman acted um, not not illegally in, in the eyes of the law, but um, improperly to um, when he wrote that letter to the chair, uh, unanimously naming her the chair of the new split off organization um, that she created. Um, essentially, their findings were that it was a coup, um, and that. JBH should not have sent that letter, that that letter was not a normal letter, that that letter was unique and not something that was sent around regularly like he had claimed online. Um, irregular would be the word then. Uh, irregular would be yes, the word. Yes, he, he acted improperly and irregularly in that situation. Um, and yeah, and so, but he's already resigned, so we're, we're doing our best now to move past that. The investigative committee was disbanded with on receipt of their final report, which they submitted like the day after the meeting, which was like no changes, because they basically told us at the meeting, hey, this is all we got. We've got people who refuse to talk to us. We have no power of attorney to force them to talk to us. So that's kind of where we were at. But the findings that they could figure out were that, um, that he acted improperly. And he also deleted his emails after he resigned, like wiped everything off the list. Um, and that is something that we're still talking about trying to recover from Google. Um, what's that? That's not cool. No, it's, it's not good. Um, I hate to say it, you know, uh, what is it, what cops always say, if you're, if you're, don't be, if you're not hiding anything or whatever, you shouldn't be afraid, but uh, uh, if you're not hiding anything. If you didn't do anything if wrong. If you didn't do anything wrong, you shouldn't be deleting your emails, but that's just a personal opinion. Um, but yeah, no, the committee found that he, he acted improperly, and then he, of course, resigned shortly after that, so it kind of became a moot point within the committee itself. But uh, yeah, it's a long and short of that. Does anyone have any thoughts on the new chair? I don't, I'm not familiar with the new chair or any of the, the of those kinds of things. Uh, my, uh, so our, all of our votes are public for who, when we appointed the new chair. I did not vote for her personally, but she's a good person. Um, just, uh, we had some differences of opinion on whether or not she should remain chair of a state while also chairing the national committee. And she said she would not resign as chair of Texas. And so that disqualified her in my mind. So I did not put her on my ballot, but, um, she's a good person. Um, I think she's doing a good job. Um, you know, aside from my personal opinion on holding two hats at once. Her name is Whitney Bill, for those of you that don't know. Her name is Whitney Bill U. B I L U or B I L Y E U. And like I said, she's chair of Tennessee, or I'm sorry, chair of Texas. And uh, previous to becoming chair, she was already on the board as the Region 7 rep. 
And then when she became chair, the region said an alternate, Ottawa sent it to rep, and then they elected another alternate. Is she still chair of Texas? She is still chair of Texas. see any other questions thank you dustin yep thank you no thank you guys for asking questions i didn't expect that <laughs> wait for that pull of punches mm -hmm. amen it's been my style. next on the agenda is election to fill vacant central committee seats is anyone interested in being treasurer are there any nominations for being treasurer I nominate Dyrone Smith. <coughs> Dyrone Smith has I joined. Know. Yay. Uh, point of information. Yes. What all is the treasurer of the Central Committee? Uh, thank you, Jesse, for the nomination. Uh, but I can't accept. Cannot. Cannot accept. The treasurer basically, the most important job the treasurer does is uh, oversee audits of uh, our finances. Are there yeah. lots of audits? No, there's usually at least seven two years. One seven two years. It's kind of weird for you to be finance director and do that. Yeah, I would not uh, recommend a finance director be treasurer of the central committee. Yeah, I'm not planning on I just don't okay. actually know what the role does. Understandable. <laughs> Are there Is there anybody interested at all? Any, any other nominees? Point of information. Can you explain in a in a summary manner the 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 overarching duties of the position uh, on a day to day Certainly. basis and over the course of you know the term? <laughs> on a day to day basis, there are very few. There there are no uh, uh, duties. You are not collecting money. You're not writing the uh, finance reports uh, to submit to the state. What you're doing is every two years there is an audit of the treasurer of the XCOM, the executive committee, and making certain that the, they are accurately reporting to the state. Um, also, you would be in charge of auditing the um, materials that are owned by the state party. Um, all of our equipment that we have in our back room, making sure that they're not missing and that um, the the things that we have purchased with the money uh, donated to us are being put to good use and not being pilfered by people uh, stealing the very expensive equipment that we do have now. That's what the um, treasurer of CENTCOM does. Yes, Mr. Gill. I guess I'll, I, nobody else wants to do it. I'll nominate Mr. Gill. Yeah, absolutely. It's a nomination for Christopher Gill, yay. Now, the, my question, did I remember say he could or could not? He declined. He, he declined, declined, so he's just, just the president. Yeah. Are there any other nominations? Well, you're offended if somebody. I think you're stuck on that, but uh, if you want to hold yourself. I'm here enough. I can walk. Yeah, you have the keys to the office. Yeah, so that's one of those I can not. Yeah, I, I, I think it's, it's a reasonable. Um, okay, I am going to do this by... Uh, unanimous consent uh, is, are all in favor of Chris Gill as the treasurer for the Central Committee say aye aye aye, aye. aye. all opposed say nay I hear no objection if someone wishes to abstain it's fine but congratulations Christopher Gill our new treasurer I will now open the floor to nominations for the vacant district uh, seats. Does anyone have a nomination? Mr. Yana. Point of information, is there anybody online even seeking a seat? If not, I'm going to look. Yes, I would like to nominate. Um, and uh, Mike, who is online um, for the... Uh, hasn't come back up yet. It's going to take a bit. Yes. And, and the urban districts. No, thanks. Uh, it may take a little while. Your name is Bill Fankhauser? Fankhauser, yes. Fankhauser? Yes. Really? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> 
S E R H E. H A U S E. What county did you go then? I'm sorry, everyone. My power went out and then came back up, so I missed whatever was explained. I think 15 is what I have. Yeah, you, yeah. <laughs> Bill yeah. Fankhauser, candidate for District 15. That would be CA. CA. Okay, who was the. Uh, Derek, Derek Rathman? Can you spell your last name, please? R-E-T-H-M-A-N. And what district do you live in? Eight. Eight. That would be H-B that you would be running for. Was there another name that was out there? Um, yes. Uh, the is in the web address. Mark Cretella. I really doubt the name. Mark, Mark Cretella. Cretella. So, Mr. Cretella, what, what congressional districts do you live in? Thirteen. What county do you live in? Trumbull. Trumbull. It's a nice painting. Mark. In the previous person for District 8, Rethman. R E T H M A N. R E T H M A N. First name. You spelled there B E R E D. What's Rethman? Uh, dark. Dark. Well, R-E-T-H. What side? Bill Jordan. Right. It was Mark Ruffin. Yeah. All right. And Mark was in what county again? Was it Trumbull? Trumbull County. So, yes, Mark. Trumbull. Point of information, I'm sure. Yes, sir. So I have a point of information. It appears, according to my understanding of the bylaws, that they are all eligible. Because the last time any of them voted in a partisan, one of them is registered L, Cretella is. The other two, last time they voted in a partisan primary was 2016. So I believe they are all three eligible. Uh, thank you. I appreciate the eligibility check. Thank you. Okay. We are, beginning, we are going to begin with eight. B. Derek Rathman. Um, would, uh, you made the nomination. Would you like to speak to his nomination? I would. Um, so I'm going to speak. They're all in similar spots. I'm going to speak to all three, kind of generally. Um, I've I put out the request of who is interested to be. Um, a central committee member for the Libertarian Party. Um, they responded, and then, so they responded promptly to an email by filling out a survey. Then they responded by text. I called all of them. They picked up. So this is already better than oh, yeah. some history. <laughs> um, and they're all libertarians. They want to end the war, end the government, don't know what the war is. All haven't voted for the other parties in a while, and they, I warned them that this meeting may take like seven hours, and they still are willing to give up a Saturday for it. And it's, God bless them. yeah, <laughs> yeah, so that's it. I, I'm looking forward to having them on the committee. Derek, would you like to speak to your nomination? Uh, sure. Uh, all I have to say on this matter is that I, uh, I've i been uh, aspiring uh, to the libertarian ideals best I can uh, throughout my life, uh, uh, as far as I've been aware of them. And I've been looking at this party, and I really do think that if we're going to make any change in this uh, country of ours, we're going to have to uh, start here. I, I truly do think this is probably the best way we're going to be able to get through it in a timely manner uh, that will be for the best interest of all. I think that I can help locally here in Ohio and represent District 8 the best I can. Do you plan on attending the national convention? Yes, ma'am. Any other questions? If, excuse me, um, this is some recent you know, issues we've had. If I Google your name, what will I find? 
know. If that's if you find anything. You may, you may find uh, I was uh, vice president of the College Republicans in Bowling Green. Um, uh, you may find uh, something, a Facebook post from an old band director from high school. Um, you may find an old uh, Instagram account which has about three things, and both and two of the three are memes. So. <laughs> No, nothing bad in your past. You're on no, a, no. You're on the memes list. <laughs> yes, two times. There you go. Wow. Oh, what instrument did you play? Uh, I was a bear fan of tuba. Nice. Okay. I, too, was a college Republican president. I don't hold it against you. <laughs> I'd also like to point out that in the uh, executive committee meeting that we just had um, before the CENTCOM, uh, that Derek volunteered to be on the credentials committee as an alternate to me uh, for the uh, national convention. So that's something that I really appreciate. And I'm glad he's here. Okay. Did anyone else have any other questions for Derek? What bring what what about being a Derek brings so many Derek's to libertarian? <laughs> All the best people are Derek's. <laughs> right. Don't the forget that. Is so that helps. He's that does help. Okay. Um, <laughs> does this require a roll call vote? I believe it does require a secret ballot. Not for this. Okay. This is roll call vote. Only for executive committee uh, do we have to have secret ballot executive committee officers. And for some officers, yes. And some call officers. All right, so roll call vote um, to accept Derek Rethman for seat 8B. Well, question, if we have to do it for, sorry to interrupt, if we have to do a secret for CENTCOM officers, technically, did we have to do a secret for Mr. Gill? You know, we should, because that is absolutely, you are absolutely right. I totally fudged that, didn't I? Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to disparage well, you, but if you want to say that, that's If cool. we all said I at the same time, no one can tell who said well, I. <laughs> yeah. yeah, technically for our records, we're supposed to have it on paper. Well, yeah, plus Noda could win. Noda could win. Well, let's see, if Noda no votes, technically counts. Well, no, well, a Nate, no vote in, in an otherwise uncontested race would technically constitute a Noda vote. I would agree. I would agree, too. That's why we put that in the bylaws, that we could vote, you know, through voice votes. We'll circle back to it, then. We'll circle back and, and correct all my problems. All right. Um, so we need ballots. Man, um, point of order. I mean, as former chair, I saw nothing wrong with what you did. So, yeah. <laughs> as long as actually, as long as nobody challenges it, I was just gonna say it's <laughs> probably okay. until like it'll just next time. I'm not gonna challenge it. Yeah, yeah. Nobody wants to challenge it. Yeah. This is. You have our full support. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, only Chris, right? <laughs> I appreciate your support. All right, uh, but yeah, let's let's. Do a voice vote unless anyone of Jackson would like to have a secret ballot of the people in the room. Well, hold on. Are we voting on? We're voting on Derek Rethman. Okay. Rethman. And we're doing a roll call vote, you said? And we're doing a roll this call vote. Roll. Just. All right. Joshua Combs. Aye. Trisha Sprinkle. Aye. Drake Lundstrom. Aye. Don Kissick? Aye. Jay Steinmetz? Jim Barber? Aye. Derek Strello? Aye. Jeff Zweber? Aye. Carl Farnham? Aye. Darone Smith? Aye. Dustin Nana? Aye. Derek Tafe. Aye. Chris Gill. Aye. Jason Sonnenschein. Shine. Aye. Sorry. That's it. Congratulations, Derek. Thank you for All right, now your you on the list for the next vote. I do. I do. And that was from C8 Bravo. Moving down the list, Mark Cretella, uh, since he's been 
moved and I guess generally has been spoken to. Mark, would you like to speak to your uh, nomination? Sure. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Chair. Um, I've been a member of National for about four years and I think State for two or three. Um, I, um, uh, I'm a former, I don't know, conservative, but I was more of a nationalist until, I guess, the Bush administration. Uh, I'm a firm believer in the libertarian platform and objectives and ideals. Um, I, uh, I think we're living in a completely unprecedented, bizarre time. I think now more than ever, uh, we need to push forward when people are have their lives being upended. Um, I think it's a time where it's conducive, where we could we could uh, win some people over. So I'd like to be a part of that push. Like to be a part of the passion and uh, uh, I don't like to say conversion, but bringing talking to my friends. Um, you know, they're open to ideas now because they're being pushed so, so hard. I have a fourth grader and a third third grader who um, uh, it's been really tough for us because our, our school district was one of the few in the county who uh, have forced masks on, on children. And in my opinion, and I understand people, some people don't think the same, that's it's child abuse. So we're we're homeschooling with them now. I uh, have a full-time job, so it's not easy, but um, just speaking uh, as to representing, you know, uh, being a part of Central Committee and um, pushing libertarian ideals forward, uh, there's no point where I felt that's more important. And uh, I'd, I've met a few of you at National last year. Um, I, I'd love to get to know a lot more of you uh, better. And uh, like I said, I, I'd just like to be a part of... Uh, future success and uh, thinking uh, we can change people's, people's ideas and, and their whole idea of thinking. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mark. Does anyone have any questions for Mark? I'll go first. You plan on being at the convention again? I do. Next yes. Year? Okay. I'll sit next to you again. Anyone else have any questions for Mark? What district is Mark? District 13, uh, Trum Trumbull County. I'm near the Youngstown, Warren uh, area. I'm in Girard, actually, uh, one town north of Youngstown. That would be 13 Bravo, by the way. Is there anything in a Google search that you would uh, like to tell us about in advance? I'm not a big fan of Google, but I don't think you'll find anything uh, strange or negative uh, if there's a search upon my name. Yeah, I did run for city auditor in my hometown two years ago as an independent since I couldn't register as a libertarian. Um, I ran against the mayor's niece uh, in a heavy, eh, my town is about 80% Democrat registration. So I had my uh, odds against me. I managed to get 43% of the vote because I knocked on every door of every registered voter. So I'm a little proud of that, even though I wasn't successful. Wow. That is All right, that's wow. Thank you. Run again. <laughs> We'll support you. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. If you want to run again, we support you. Thank run you. Again. Run again. That's just that just means we need another thousand people to vote for you. That's all that means. Okay. Are there any other questions? Uh, do you intend to read and follow the Constitution, bylaws, and standard operating procedure of the party? I do. Yes. Okay, hearing no further questions, we can do a 
Can I put the roll call? Yep. For Mr. Catella. Yes. Uh, Joshua Toms. Aye. Trisha Sprankle. Aye. Drake Lundstrom. Aye. Don Kissick. Aye. Jay Steinmetz. Jay, I didn't hear a response. I think his power's been cutting in and out. Oh, that's right. Okay. Um, Derek Rutter, how do you vote? Aye. James Barber. Aye. Australia, myself. Aye. Jeff Sweeber. Aye. Carl Farnham. Aye. Tyrone Smith. Aye. Dustin Knott. Aye. Derek Tafe. Aye. Chris Gill. Aye. Jason. Aye. Uh, is that me or is that another yeah, Jason? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yes, you. <laughs> okay. Uh, because you, you did call everyone else by their full name. Uh, I, I apologize. I stumbled for a second. I'm having issues. Okay. Aye. What's your vote? Aye. Okay. Aye. All right. Passes. Congratulations, Mark. Welcome to the club. Mark Cortella in. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Fenghauser, would you like to speak to your nomination? I feel like I should if I'm the only one, the last one to go. So. Hi, everybody. <laughs> you have the right to remain silent. Yeah, this is true, but, you know, it's more fun to talk sometimes. Um, my name is Bill Fenghauser. Uh, I grew up in a politically diverse household. Um, and, you know, I was always pushed as a young man to be, you know, considered the good party. And as I got older, I became more uh, conservative in my fiscal policy. Um, and not really realizing that the ideals and what I found, you know, to be important in this world and in this and in our country, more importantly, um, were the ideal, uh, the ideals of the Libertarian Party. So um, I look forward to getting to know the people here in this room, the people here on the Internet. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a weird world that we're living in right now. Um, and the fact that I feel that I'm being pushed into a corner by our elected officials is terrifying. Um, and I, you know, I want to start pushing back, and I, yeah, hopefully I can open some people's ears and eyes to really the reality of the, the situation that we are, excuse me, beginning to go down. So, um, yeah, I, I worked for the Ohio State Medical Association for about five and a half years, so I got a really good look at how politics really operates uh, and at the state level, and I'm sure at the national level it's even more fun, but... Um, yeah, that's that's why I'm here today, and I you know I look forward to being nominated for the the, the 15th district of uh, Ohio for the Karen Party. So happy to answer any questions anybody may have for me. Can I go into the national convention? I think I can even make that happen. Yeah, it's it's 2022, correct? No, the national convention. Yes, 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 yes right. Next next year, but it's, okay. Yeah, no, that's 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 easily uh, scheduled. Uh, every two years, every two years. Okay, cool. I did Google you, and most of what I found was a Thomas Jefferson quote on your website. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you found my business page. Great. Yes. Um, <laughs> is there anything else that I haven't found on Google that I should have found that's horrible? Well, horrible, <laughs> that's that's debatable. Uh, everything is public record. You know, as a young man, I made a lot of mistakes. Uh, I paid for them, and now I'm here to hopefully do better by, by myself and by, by the rest of everybody else. So uh, I'm not going to hide from my past, but uh, like I said, all I can do is move forward. So, yeah. Were any of your mistakes of a sexual nature? No, no. <laughs> they were all uh, alcohol related. And oh, I haven't oh, had a drink in six years. So, all good. Good yeah. for you. thank you. Good for you. Yeah. Congratulations. Appreciate that. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Okay. <laughs> Appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you for the enthusiasm. Of course. Okay, if there are no other questions. Go yes, ahead. there is one. Do you intend to follow the Constitution, uh, to read and follow the Constitution, bylaws, and standard operating procedures of the party? Absolutely. Standard operating procedures is the only way we can all be working from the same playbook. All right. Thank you. Mr. We'll do a quick roll call for the nomination of Bill Fankhauser to C-15A. 
All right, Joshua Combs. Aye. Trisha Sprankle. Aye. Trey Lundstrom. Aye. Don Kissick. Aye. Jay Steinmetz. Still having issues, I assume. Jarek Rethman. Aye. Jim Barber. Aye. Derek Stroh, myself. Aye. Jeff Sweeber. Aye. Carl Farnham. Aye. Tyrone Smith. Aye. Dustin Nana. Aye. Derek Tafe. Aye. Uh, Mark Tella. Aye. Chris Gill. Aye. Jason Sonnenstein. Aye. Here we have it. Delightful. Welcome all. Thank you. Welcome. I hope we're like five minute recess, bathroom break. We will stand at ease for five minutes. Let's try to keep it to ten. Okay. <laughs> we're at ease. Thank you. All right, sorry about that, guys. I got disconnected, but I'm back now. Hi, Dyrone. We are in recess. Uh, it'll probably be another, uh, I don't know, two to seven minutes. Okay, uh, you guys want me to chime back in, or we just going to all stay in? I'm planning to say. Uh, I, I, would guess, I would guess just stay in. That's what I'm doing. Uh, and then uh, then when it's called to order, be ready. Okay. All right. Well, then I'll go make me a sandwich or something. Wait for the next, uh, the next, uh, the next, uh, you know, start of the meeting. Don't say hi. <laughs>
Okay, we're back online. Okay, let's try muting if you're not talking because we got a lot. That was us? Okay, sorry. Sorry about that. Okay, we are moving on to old business. The 2022 convention committee, um, there were some vacancies. Is there, do we have any volunteers for appointment of vacancies? Mr. Skrilo. Well, what all does the committee do? Like, point of information? Plan the, Plan the entire convention. You have to get the hotel, the, um, the electrical, the caterer, the, you know, um, guest speakers, guest speakers, guest speakers. arrange for their travel, arrange for their hotel, um, logistics, um, uh, the subcommittees for things like credentials. The, and so there's on. credentialing that needs to be done there, with a subcommittee of this committee. Yeah, um, there will need to be know. sponsorships. Uh, we'll need to put together yeah, like literature, yeah. advertising, vendor tables. Vendor, yeah, vendor tables, and uh, there might be, need to be decorators for the vendor tables. And can people outside the committee ask other people to help with stuff like uh, with permission from the committee? It depends on what you mean. It depends what it is. Okay, and no, but more like this. I would want myself to be available to like help with some stuff. I don't think enough time to actually do like the full. Don't want to be on the I'm committee, on the but committee, yeah. and that's well yeah, volunteer. So yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to preemptively volunteer. I said no for all. No. So okay. Derek actually wants to be on it, so that's one. And we have two vacancies. Okay, let me, Derek. Okay, so the current members are Jim Cavoli, Dustin Nana. And Patrick Lasco. Okay, and Derek would like to be on. Can we and there's one... specify last names when Derek's are used? Yeah, we have to now. It's Strelo. Uh... The Derek caucus. We're gonna have to start it. The Derek caucus. Uh, that's what we need. Another caucus. Uh, we'd like to have one more person if that is a possibility. Sorry. I said I'm back. I'm sorry. My internet went down. The power went out. Jay, Thank do you, you want to join the committee? I don't even know what we're talking about. You're on it. <laughs> Madam Chair, yeah. would you like me to come up and explain what the committee does? Please come up and explain all, all right. the intricacies of putting on a convention. It's a lot. All right. So I am currently on the committee. We have two vacancies. Um, it's a five-person committee. The convention committee, the convention oversight committee, is in charge of planning the convention. And when I say planning the convention, I mean all of it. They're in charge of finding a hotel, doing site visits, determining if that's the right place to go, negotiating the contract. Um, they're in charge of inviting speakers, uh, setting the schedule for the event. Um, they're in charge of either doing it themselves or appointing a subcommittee to do credentialing for the convention. Um, they're in charge of, uh, you name it, they're in charge of it. They're in charge of the entire event. And the reason why there's a specific committee specifically for this event, rather than just having the XCOM at large do it, is because it's a, it's a larger workload. Um, so ideally, you would be available to have a meeting at least probably bi-weekly or if not weekly for an hour, hour and a half to get the ball rolling. We are a little bit behind the eight ball because we've had resignations and haven't been having meetings lately. Um, but uh, so I would expect it to be maybe more weekly at this point. Um, and then once you get closer to the event, sometimes it kind of trails off and, and you don't have to need as much. But um, <laughs> bottom line Thank is you. the ideal person will be available at least an hour a week at some point. Hopefully we can get all five members to have that same hour available. Um, and just, you know, but other than that, I, I personally think it's really fun. What um, is the date of the convention? Uh, we don't have one yet. yet. We haven't picked it yet because there's only three of us out of the five members. Yeah, so if you this, want to have a say in when the convention is, yeah. work around your schedule. This yeah, is there you go. If you, yeah, if you want to selfishly be a part of the committee that decides when the convention is, and that then it can be planned around when you're available, you should join the committee. I believe the goal is to have it before national, The right? goal is to have it, and I believe we have to. I don't mind. We probably don't have to. The goal is to have it before the national convention, which is Memorial Day weekend in 2022. The range of dates that we initially talked about before the, where there were resignations and stuff was sometime April-ish, late March, early April, that time frame. 
Um, so it's coming up pretty quick, uh, but there's still enough time and we get the committee filled and start planning things that we can, you know, have our site visits, hopefully here within the next few months, uh, pick our site. And then once the site's picked, we can start filling out other stuff like speakers and um, time slots and, you know, other stuff. There might be extracurricular activities we plan. There was a discussion of, depending on where it was, maybe we would rent out the closest theater to it and show a movie and have everybody come and hang out and watch a movie one night. Um, you know, it's, it's really, it's very broad, the responsibilities. It becomes, it's your event, and as long as you provide enough time for the things that have to happen at the convention, like business, everything else is, is open-ended. Um, so I personally think it's a lot of fun. I've been on several convention and conference committees. I was on the conference committee um, this past time. Um, I was not on a convention committee the year before that, but I was on conference committee the year before that. Um, it's just, it's just a really fun time. Um, and, and you get to dream up ways to make money for the party um, and have fun doing it. How much overlap is there between the bylaws committee I just joined and the current convention committee? Well, it's going to be a time thing. Are you going to, I can't tell you when the bylaws of convention committee is going to want to meet, but it becomes a time thing. Like, are you going to have, I mean, in membership, like, are we, are we close to like having it be in uh, five and I don't know. What is the overlap? I don't can't. Who's on bylaws and, and constitution? Uh, uh, it's myself, Derek Trillo, you. So I'm, I'm, I'm the only overlap that I see between you are. convention and bylaws. And I will Stralo. be. I will be. Oh, and Stralo if he is elected. So it'll be myself and Stralo. Appointed, but yeah. <laughs> if that answers your question. It does answer my question. Let me. I'm going to have to socialize this with the boss. Is there? Is there more? Can we do this over chat? If or is this something we have to do today? I would really. The committee really wants to get members today. If it ends up being that only Stralo applies and we are up to four, we, we at least we'll have a quorum. We really, really want to get the ball rolling because we are behind the ball a little bit right now. We have a year. We have a six months. We've got seven, six months, seven months. Mr. Kissick. I just um, would it be possible for anyone interested maybe to volunteer, you know, the some committee. time and, and, some, and some energy, but not necessarily, not necessarily be on the committee. committee so. will not turn down help. Okay. okay. Yeah. I, at least, as long as I'm on it, I'm not going to vote for that. Uh, I, I, I will not help. If no one else is doing it, I could join. Okay. Well, really, it's. Um, I'm sorry. I just want to say I apologize. I probably won't be volunteering for any extra committees because I'm also trying to help getting the Warren County affiliate off the ground. I'm serving as an officer on that, so I apologize. That's, that's, that's a good priority. That's a good thing. That's a good. That's great. It's a good reason. Do you have to be a member of Central Committee to be a member of that? You do not. You can be. It can be any member of the party. Okay. Yeah, he's, found, Jim's not. He's, he's on Dexcom, but not Centcom because he's an officer. If I found someone later, could I like find someone to replace myself? Theoretically, you could resign, and then we could replace you. But it's going to take a vote of the Central Committee, unfortunately, because they're the controlling body for this. Yeah. So if you've got somebody interested in helping out, basically, I'm saying don't do it if you're planning on resigning, please, because we've already had enough. That's fair. That's fair. We've already had enough resignations. <laughs> like you could. I, so would it be possible that someone that like doesn't officially get appointed by Central Committee, but just shows up every meeting, helps out anyways? Sure, you can be an ex officio member and yeah. okay. we'll, we'll welcome you. And Can somebody look over the contracts? Yes. Yeah, okay. we, we outsource that kind of stuff all the time. None of us, as far as I know, on the current committee are lawyers. So, I mean, there's one standing next to me. So, we, you know, so, we have people look over contracts. You know, we have people, hey, if none of us can make, if only one of us can make it to a certain site and we want to have a second set of eyes and somebody's local, you know, why not? Okay. I will say the convention, we try to do the convention centralized so that it's at least equal distance from most people in the state. Uh, we don't like to put it like up in one of the corners and then somebody from Cincinnati has to drop it. You know, uh, it just seems unfair. And then the conference is the one we try to move around. It ended up being centralized this time because we couldn't turn down the contract that we got. But. Yeah, then I'll take this spot. I'll probably show up a lot now, but I don't. We would appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, we would appreciate it. Okay. If there's anybody else interested, I'll let you. I'll do my best, but you can throw my name in there. Yeah. I'll do that. Scheduling may be a bit of an issue, but I'll do my best. Man. I mean, if you're good at event planning, then yeah. That's that's yes, that's what I did for. Uh, I mean, is, and you're, you're local here, right? I'm local here, yeah, yeah. So Great. I'll, 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 I'll get it. Yeah. That's 
Uh, just to warn you, I'm probably given given the uh, conversations between me and the current members, I'm probably going to wind up sharing this okay. committee. So I live in Toledo, so I can't like do site visits. Okay. Well, and I, I just like that. Okay. So, yeah, if you know. Okay, order. Is there anyone else online that would like to be nominated? Or can we vote on these two candidates? That's kind of what I thought. <laughs> Noda is always available. <coughs> is, this a, is this a valid thing? It should be. Yeah, it should be a valid thing. Not secret, but... So, so we can do a robot vote? I think we can do it. I'm, I'm, just, I'm, I'm just trying not to talk out of turn. I believe we can do this as a block vote. That's I, up to the chair. I would like to do it as a block vote for both Derek and Bill. Derek Strelo. Strelo. And Bill Fankhauser, our newest member. Second. Is there any objection? I appreciate it. We'll do a quick roll call in favor of Strelo and Fankhauser to be on the 22 Convention Committee to fill the vacancies. Let's go. Joshua Combs. Aye. Trisha Sprankle. Aye. Ray Lundstrom. Aye. Don Kissing. Aye. Jay Steinmetz. Aye. Derek Rethman. Aye. Jim Barber. Aye. Derek Skillo. Aye. Jeff Sweeber. Aye. Carl Farnham. Aye. Baron Smith. Aye. Dustin Nana. Aye. Derek Tate. Aye. Mark Cortella. Aye. Bill Finkhauser. Chris Gill. Aye. Jason Sonnenshen. I, I stumble on your name, Jason. I'm sorry. No problem. Aye. Lovely. Congratulations. Uh, you guys can decide amongst yourselves. I'm sure there will be a new chat thing set up with all five of you, and you can get to work. Let me know. I'm happy to help. And so apparently is Drake. Okay, I have other old business listed here. Is there anything that anyone was aware of an old business? I know we didn't have minutes, so I'm not really sure if there was anything left over. I don't think so. Does anyone have anything? My recollection is no. The only thing I, I'll, we, we discussed this briefly earlier. At the end of the last meeting, we were discussing the online voting procedures as far as, like, the silent period of debate before vote and stuff like that. I don't know if we want to have a discussion on that here now or not. If, if the SOP is 24 hours, Jim Barber and a few others have recommended 48 so that people don't have to try to log in every day. Um, Logging in every day is difficult. Yeah. Go ahead, Dustin. So my understanding is that the SOP can be amended by the chair at any time. It can. Would you just be willing to do that? You mean work? Okay, yes, yes, I can do that. Yeah, so like, do we even need to? I mean, if Although, do we not have a discussion on any other changes to this process since it seems to be. I mean, theoretically, what I'm saying is theoretically it's not hurting. Well, through um, operating procedures is typically handled by the external chair. Well, not for the standard operating procedure for the same. Well, yeah. Um, we have our own voting thing. I would be happy to take a look at that. If you have suggestions, please uh, email them to me. Um, I do check my LPO uh, email twice a week, which I highly recommend everyone else do as well. <laughs> um, On that score, I sent it. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. I was just going to say, Jim sent me a thing that will allow you to remove your chat notifications from your LPO email. I I put it on the CentCom thing this morning, so you'll you'll just get email rather than your name was used in the chat if you were doing both, which makes it easier to find what you're trying to find. Absolutely, yeah. The the twelve hundred messages I get a week are a bit much. Yeah, you won't get those without the chat thing. 
that that will help. Okay. You got to go to the web. You got to go online to the web page settings rather than through the app on your phone to get it to fix it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Good that's, tips. That's the only all thing those. I remember that was lingering in the last video. Those are all good tips. Let's move on uh, to the election of the executive committee vacancies. Uh, we're going to take these uh, in the following order. Vice Chair, Secretary, and if there are any other vacancies as a result of the previous two, we'll tackle those as well. I suspect there might be an at-large vacancy. How we're going to do this, because these elections are, they must be by a secret ballot. Yes. So if, and, there, and NOTA, of course, is always an option. Um, I suspect there will be multiple people. We will have ballots printed here for the people in the room. Um, your participation online is appreciated uh, with regard to commenting or nominations. However, voting only happens in the room. Point of information, can we use something like an election body or... Something like we're not set up for. Unfortunately, it would be it would work if somehow we can make it secret to the election. It, it yeah, it can't be it can't be secret. One person's still going to see it, unfortunately. People, so it's it's not technically uh, a secret ballot. I believe there was also issues that on uh, a ballot that re might require multiple ballots. Uh, Nota gets eliminated if it's last, and there's no way for us to make it stay. So yeah, if we can come up with a better way to do it that's completely secret, oh, then point of information. Go ahead. Do you have a quorum of just the people in the room? If you count just the people in the room, do you have a quorum? Point of information, what is our current um, composition of section? You know, yeah, let's go over that. That's what I was <laughs> Okay. Um, we do not, but we have ruled that because there is quorum in the meeting, that a no vote... <laughs> Is not necessarily lacking. I, I, challenge, the I, I would like to challenge that ruling. If okay. you are setting rules that we are excluded from participating in the meeting, we should be treated as not not present. That doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> If you can figure out a way for us to fully participate in the meeting, we should count as present. If we cannot fully participate in the meeting, um, we're not here. I agree. It's been moved and seconded. I have to take a vote on that. Yeah. Challenge, the ruling of the chair. Just come yeah. challenge the ruling of the chair, and I'm happy to have a roll call vote for that. Point of information. Can, yeah, I would still like the information about what is our composition. What I'm is, working on it. Yeah. Okay. I would like to wait on the vote. I, I, would, I would like to wait on the vote until we have that information. Twenty-two. Okay. Um, all of the, and all you count all the rest of the NOTA winners? No, no, no. All, only the other people that show up online is NOTA. Another question. Does Mr. Foley need to be sponsored to speak at various proceedings? Yes. yes. Okay. Well, if you want to speak to this, I will, I, I will sponsor you. So let me know. We have 17 total present. Point of information, what is the number required for quorum? Yeah, I'm, I'm working on it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Madam Chair? Yes. Um, would old business have included the vacancy of the seats for the non attendance? I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. That was at the members. end of the meeting. That's at the oh. end of the meeting. Is that the very end? Okay. I wasn't sure the, the members who hadn't been present to a CENTCOM meeting for two or three times. Oh, that's yes. at the end of the agenda. The, the, I, yeah, I, I, the body, including Ms. Pettigrew, who is probably going to be advocated at the end of this meeting, is 22. We have a total of 17 present of 22 seats. Right. 
And so quorum would be 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There are only nine in the room. We do not have a quorum, and that is what's been challenged. I'm saying that there, I, my ruling was that there is a quorum present, but non-voting. And if they can't vote, uh, the challenge is that if they, they can't vote, that they're not going to be present, and therefore we don't have quorum. And I see that argument. But, yeah, see, I think I'm withdrawing my... So we're, we're to vote on the appeal from the role. Just vote. It has to go. Yeah. Can we do a, a five-minute recess for a research of procedures? Yeah, because I'm, I'm reconsidering my ruling as a result, because I, I think that's a fair challenge. That we stand at ease for five minutes. Can someone peruse the Constitution?
Jay, I think you have a hot mic. And you? I'm not saying anything. Oh, sorry. There's there's noises coming through from someplace. I will mute. chance as well. My thinking in my ruling is that every member who participates online can fully participate in the proceedings of a meeting via telephone conference call. Absolutely. A member so participating shall be counted as part of the quorum and shall have the rights, privileges, and responsibilities as if present. So everything that we've done so far has been with a quorum present. 
elections for officers and replacement of statewide candidates after primary election as required by law will be conducted using secret ballot method as defined by the central committee chair. That's me. I have defined the voting method for this to be the secret ballot method here, here as we print off the ballots after nominations and the vote is taken here on paper ballot. That is how we've done it previously. Not, I mean, it's right, but that's how we've done it previously. I think that is consistent with our bylaws and that has been my ruling. Um, if someone would like to speak to against that now, please be heard. Who's speaking yes, against? If I, could, if I could be recognized. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, thank you. So uh, the rule, the, the, um, the challenge that, that I made or attempted to make um, was really a, was a challenge to how we count quorum. Um, so previously today, um, we have effectively held a, a hybrid meeting. Um, we have effectively held hybrid meetings of this committee in the past. Uh, where there were some folks physically present where the chair is, and there were some folks um, who were re remotely uh, participating. And, and as such, all of those participants were counted as present. And up until this point today, uh, the, the remote folks have effectively fully participated. Um, roll call votes have been conducted of people present in, in various ways. Um, in the past, we have conducted secret ballots uh, in an effective hybrid meeting approach where uh, folks physically present and, and folks present online were able to participate in, um, uh, in, in those uh, uh, um, written secret ballots through various technological means. Um, now we are uh, at a place where uh, the procedures for the next section of the meeting are excluding the online participants from fully participating. In, in effect, we are not present in the meeting that is now switching from hybrid mode for full participation, hybrid mode for full participation has occurred until now, to full participation being limited to an online only mode. Therefore, my challenge is, if we switch to full participation being in person only, then the membership in person is the correct count to determine if there is a quorum. If the in-person group does in fact constitute a quorum, then the in-person group is fully empowered to continue to conduct business of the central committee because a quorum is present in person. My challenge is merely that the in-person group does not constitute a quorum or is not being correctly counted as being a quorum for continuing this business. Therefore, the, the challenge is the vote will fail under the procedures as I understand them for lack of quorum. Had you gotten the folks in the room, by all means, press on. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Nana, do you wish to speak? In support of your ruling. Go right ahead. So um, quorum doesn't change based on what business we are doing. You guys count towards quorum. You just can't vote. No one's rights are being violated and nothing is changing. It's, it, it's always been the rule that if you're not in the room, you can't vote via secret ballot. There's no change in quorum to the meeting because we're conducting business that certain members don't have rights to conduct because they're not here. So there's no change in the quorum count. 
Now, if you guys all leave the meeting, then we don't have quorum. Or if enough of you leave that we are under quorum, then we don't have quorum. However, if you are here participating, commenting, debating, uh, you can nominate candidates, you can speak to or against candidates, you just simply cannot cast a ballot. You are not, quorum does not change based on the actions we are taking. So we would have quorum because there are people here online in the meeting. Madam Chair, may I make a suggestion? Go ahead. Would we, would we be capable of casting secret ballots through an email? I know this may make a small delay in the count, but if you chose an how email, be, how each of us, secret? each of us would send it to only one email of your oh, choosing. So so we're going to see who's voting. Then. I appreciate your confidence in my discretion that I would not reveal who your votes are, but I'm still going to know who your vote was for. Fair enough. It's not secret. I, I understand. I was just trying to find. I was just trying to find a, a happy medium me between the two. We've been we've been going round and round trying to figure and it out. Maybe there's something we need to change, but it's the rules we're under. Mr. Gill. As a point of information, we're looking into whether or not the secret ballot is required under the bylaws for election of executive committee. Well, and yeah, that's what. It just said election of officers and replacement statewide candidates as required by law, will be conducted using a secret ballot method defined by the Central Committee Chair. It's uh, bylaw 200, section 9. It, it is. It's definitely required secret ballot. Oh, Article 5 of the Constitution requires it. Article 5 of the Constitution as well? Sorry, I wasn't looking there. Does someone else wish to speak? Mr. I'm speaking in favor of it, just that we had we have had a hybrid meeting where executive committee was elected before and it was done by paper ballots. We will print off your paper ballot if you're online, sure. but if you don't, not here to fill it out, then I guess you abstained. That's, I, if we really need to work around it, I think people would even volunteer to like, um, leave the committee and rejoin in like five and 20 minutes just to get us down to quorum or something. Yeah. My, my only comment on that is if we don't have quorum in this room, we don't have a quorum to actually elect anybody. We right. don't have the majority. Right. So the, the, that means the vote would be worthless. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Mr. Barber. Uh, like, maybe a point of information. I remember that we had a couple of votes that were considered secret ballots using a form of software online. I believe. There was problems with that software and it didn't really come out. It, it wasn't secret. secret. That was the reason you right. it was going problem. That's the issue. <coughs> Does anyone else wish to speak it's, online? It's sad. It's a shame. It's 209. It's a shame. It's a shame. It's a shame. We need to move to close. <coughs> you know, no. I, I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll Okay, uh, Mr. Kissick is sponsoring a non member, uh, Jim Cavoli, our ex com chair, to speak on the motion. Speak only very briefly <laughs> on that. I would, I would just, I, I realize that you have a procedural question in front of you, which begs some grand consideration. But I certainly, it is my fervent hope that whichever way people vote here, there is some mechanism by which members here intend to fill the vacancies on my committee forthwith. We are barely holding together operations of that committee right now as it is. It is a lot of stress left on a very few people. I am without a vice chair. I am without a secretary. I have a treasurer and myself as the only officers. And I desperately need these spots filled. Frankly, this committee is not obliged to meet in the rest of the year either. I would greatly appreciate, if nothing else, as a personal courtesy to know in very short order here, either how these spots are getting filled or when this committee is going to come back together in whatever manner it decides it needs to, to fill these vacancies. That is my primary concern. And I just really hope that that is 
of some import in the grand course of the party and our operations and in everyone's hearts and minds as you all determine the vote on this appeal and whatever comes up immediately following. Thank you. Does anyone else seek to be recognized? Any hands raised? Yeah, quick question. Um, Mr. Barber. Out of everybody, including the people online, how many how many people uh, out of the entire body are we missing? We have the entire body is 22. The entire meeting has 17 people present, and only nine of us are in this room. And there's two people that still have to be removed. We're going to remove the dead body regardless. That still wouldn't take us to quorum, even if they were removed now. Right. Because we can suspend the rules to literally kick them off the committee via vote, and it still wouldn't matter. Well, I guess if we get that stuck. To ask people, hey, are you willing to resign for the next 10 minutes? No, no, no we're not doing that. That's, that's that's a, a that we, we are going to move to a roll call vote. And a yay vote. <clears throat> a yay vote will uh, sustain the ruling of the chair. A nay vote will appeal the ruling of the chair. Are there Over any turn. questions? Just one point of information. Can you summarize in brief what exactly what you, we need to come in and vote on paper? Is that's what you're asking? If we vote yay? No. 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 So if you Stop. want to let the chair yes. hold, my ruling was that the election of the executive committee officers must be done by a paper ballot, which effectively means only people in the room are going to be voting. The challenge to that ruling is that because we don't have a quorum in the room, there is insufficient quorum to elect officers. And therefore, we cannot hold these elections to the executive committee. Does that make sense? It so does. yay, for me, we are going to go through the paper ballot process, nay, appeals uh, or sustains the appeal and says, no, Trish, you're wrong. I, I believe that's backwards. Am I backwards? No, you got it. Well, no, no, no. Saying, no the, the motion is to challenge, uh, the, challenge the chair. So yes. a yay vote would be upholds against no, Trisha. No, a yes no. vote always upholds the ruling of the chair. Oh. Yes, really? upholds the ruling of the chair. Is that Robert's rules of order? Yes. yes. Okay, All right. I, my problem. apologies. The appeal triggers the vote. I, but yeah. I understand Derek. Concern, less confusion, but all right. That's why. Okay. I it's clear. Hold on, Jay. So may, I, may I ask one more question? You may. Uh, what What is the need for the paper ballot? Is this to, just to meet a, a secret ballot type? Yes. Rule? It is because it is a secret ballot. Wait, that's it's part of our rules. We have it's also which, part of state law. Which is a, our bylaw. I'm in favor of ignoring state law and also in our constitution. Uh, we can't just do that. So. Okay. Yeah, so the okay. fact that it's part of Ohio law tells me that we could not even validate all of this. We could consider a temporary suspension of the rules. We, in the Constitution. we cannot no. suspend the, the Constitution. Yeah, that would be very illegal. No. <laughs> okay, are we ready for our roll call vote? Yeah, I'm good. And we understand. Can you reiterate one more time about yay vote? Yay vote. Yay vote. Yes, vote Ultimately, yay vote. We're doing paper ballots of people in the room. No vote. There's not going to be any vote because we don't have quorum in the room. Meeting comes to an end. Okay. Are we ready? Carry on, Mr. Stroh. Joshua Toms. Yay. Trisha Sprankle. Yay. Drake Lundstrom. Aye. Don Kissick. Yay. Jay Steinmetz. Yay. Derek Rethman. Yay. Jim Barber. Yay. Derek Strelo, I vote yay. Jeff Sweeber. No. Carl Farnham. 
Uh, yay. Tyrone Smith. May. Dustin Nana. Yay. Derek Tafe. Yay. Mark Patella. Yay. Chris Gill. Yay. Bill Fankhouse. Oh, Bill Fankhouse. I'm sorry. That's right. Yay. Jason Sonnenschein. No. No. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. Thirteen yes. Three no. Did I miss did I miss anybody? No, I got him. Thank you. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I No. I think I accidentally counted someone on the 17th. So yeah. I think they're, yeah. So 16. Actually, so yes. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you. Uh, the ruling of the chair is sustained. We will continue with the nominations for vice chair of the executive committee. I'm opening nominations. Mr. I'm Trello. Not, I nominate Dustin Nana. Second. Second. Dustin Thanks. Nana has been nominated in second. Is there anyone else? Trump point of order. Um, should we see if Mr. Nay accepts the nomination before oh, we absolutely. Have another nomination? Absolutely. I already expressed interest on the list. I absolutely accept the nomination. Obviously, just keep everything above. No, I totally get you, dude. Totally get you. Mr. Nana does accept. Is there anyone else that would like to be considered? Okay. Uh, we will have the Ballots printed. If this noted is always an option. Um, I don't think we need to see. Oh, no, I would actually like a couple people to speak on my behalf, and then I can give a short. Well, sure. Dustin's oh, a good guy. Go, go right ahead. While we print the ballots, <laughs> I have people that want to speak on behalf. Go up oh. first, and then. Golly, Jesus! All right. Yeah. Oh. Hi, I'm Christopher Gill. For those of you who don't know me, for those of you who don't know Dustin Nana, he's been a great, hardworking member of this party for a long, a long time now, actually. So he's held in here. Um, we'd love to, as uh, pardon me, as a member, an at-large member currently of the executive committee, I would love to have him uh, in our vice chair position. Please, please vote for Dustin over Noda. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, this is Drake. I have not been around as long, but just it is impressive how many roles that Dustin has not just had in the party, but done well consistently. If anything, the only risk would be giving him too much stuff to do, but at least asking that he's doing an amazing role in the state, uh, in national, it, locally, uh, running for uh, helping local candidates run the races. I would love to have Dustin Anna as the vice chair of the party. As long as it's not burning out too bad. <laughs> I just want to offer one very important point of information about Mr. Nana's nomination. It is that he has held this position before in the past and has stepped up in the light of a chair resignation and served as interim chair and has conducted the meetings. And from what all I am aware, that he did so quite admirably and effectively. So please also take that consideration as we vote. I uh, would like to sponsor Mr. Cavoli. Sure. And so without objection, uh, I will add that uh, I think Dustin is a fabulous candidate for this role. Uh, as has been mentioned, he's done it before. Um, I enjoyed being on the executive committee when he uh, found himself in, in the situation of both being vice chair as well as acting as chair for a while. Um, I think we have a pretty good working relationship together and uh, would look forward to uh, the, the opportunity to have him in the vice chair capacity again. Uh, I think it would be a great fit for our committee and keep us moving forward. Thank you. Mr. Straylon, you don't have any more people than I even asked stepped up. So. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I got a little busy. I, I was, I don't know. Do you... uh, I, 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 will, I will say that having uh, been part of this party uh, 
committee for the last five-ish years, um, Dustin has been someone who always rises to the challenge, and he's had several, several different roles at a time. Uh, he's someone that I personally confide in and trust, and I believe that he would serve very well for the rest of this term as vice chair. Thank you. <laughs> has everyone received a ballot and submitted the ballot to the envelope? Well, since everybody already voted, I'm not going to say anything. I'll just wait to see if I won, I guess. <laughs> no, we're done. No, we're done. Right. Dustin. Dustin. On behalf of Noda, Noda has never let me down. Noda is always there. Always doing the job it was meant to do. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Noda We can all get behind Noda. Unfortunately, there were no votes for Noda. Therefore, congratulations, Dustin. Uh, thank you to those of you in the room. Thank you to those of you online for being present in the meeting. Hope to see you in person soon. I'm sorry that you did not get to vote. Um, this is something that, as a member of the Bylaws and Constitution Committee, we are unfortunately be looking at trying to figure it out. Unfortunately, I'm not sure there's a fix since state law requires us to do secret ballot other than to have people show up. If we find some sort of electronic way to somehow have secret ballots, um, that might be an option in the future. Um, maybe some sort of system where you get sent a ballot and then your ballot comes back like coded where your name is like a bunch of letters and numbers or something. Um, I, I'm not sure. I'm not technologically savvy enough to say, um, but we definitely will be looking into it on the, on the committee I'm on. Um, and I appreciate your support. Um, and of course, now that I'm vice chair, there is now an open at-large seat, which is not an officer seat, which everybody can vote on, which will be happening after this next secretary election. So, and I'll have more to say about that. Thank you. I'm now opening the floor to nominations for secretary of the executive committee. Can you briefly talk on the the responsibilities of the Secretary of the XCOM. Yes. Meeting minutes. Yes. We need meeting minutes, and they need to be good and keep track of all the things that the chair does because he is busy and trying to keep things running, uh, running a smooth meeting. Um, they can be found in Bylaw 300, I'm pretty sure. 300? 310. There it is. 310. Uh, be in charge of maintaining all official documents of the executive committee. Prepare all necessary notes, minutes, and other documents. Uh, which, by the way, sometimes we need to submit things to the Secretary of State, and that's, that's on mentioned the... explicitly. Oh, is it? Okay, it's coming up. Uh, file with the Ohio Secretary of State a copy of the party constitution bylaws within 30 days of adoption or amendments as required by law. Uh, keep and maintain official copies of the party's standard operating procedures, directives, and other standing rules of the party as adopted by a majority of the executive committee. File with the Ohio Secretary of State a list of members of the Central Committee and Executive Committee within 30 days of their election or appointment as required by law. I hope you were taking notes today because that's going to have to be done within the next 30 days because we have new members. Um, I'll let you know who they are. Perform all other duties prescribed by statute or, ex ex or usually exercised by the secretary and not inconsistent with the Constitution bylaws and standard operating procedures. Does that give you a basic overview? Yep. There's Thank a few you. others there, but that, that's the, the crux of it. you got to uh, do paperwork. Do paperwork Take and keep notes. track of stuff. And obviously, yeah, well, paperwork, notes, and meet deadlines. Uh, so, I'm opening. Did someone seek to be recognized? Dustin did. He just stepped outside. Oh, he's on a phone call. He'll be And you have to be at all those events. Yeah. So, yeah, please show up. And maybe train your successor would be a good thing as well. <laughs> okay. Okay, grab Dustin and have him make his. Yeah, oh, oh, Mr. Gill. Are you seeking nominations? I'm seeking nominations. I mean, point of information. Yes. For those who are unaware, uh, who are new to the committee, officers of the executive committee need not 
be such a committee members. Yes, that is true. Only at large has that requirement. So if you know of anyone interested who is not a member of this body and you can get them on the phone, you know, we may be able to consider. Is that what he's doing right now? As well, maybe. Who's he nominating? Himself? No, he's just. <laughs> he's... No, he just stepped out. He had his hand raised. Who's he nominating? I have no idea. Okay. If he's got somebody, definitely take them. I'll, <laughs> I'll nominate me yeah. just for the time being, begging literally if anybody else wants to do it. But I'll need him jumping in. I'll put him at large. So, okay. let's see. D Dustin, did you have a nominee for secretary? You had your hand raised before you left the room. Oh, so. I had my hand raised because I was just going to mention that one of their first duties is going to be, like you mentioned, and also we just amended our bylaws. Right. So that'll be another thing. Is Mr. Gill the only reluctant nominee? Please nominate somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> Are you, you're at large right now. I'm at large, so that would free up another seat. I'd rather have it. Why do you keep putting your hand in the ring? Because nobody else is going to do it. I'm literally just better than nobody. I understand. Mm -hmm. Again, will not object to anybody. I... Okay. Would you like to speak to your nomination as we print up the ballots? I guess. Howdy. Um, Hearing nobody else wanting to take the position, given that I am already at at large um, and that we will have at least one person seeking an at large slot, I would rather have a newbie start at at large, get their feet wet instead of throwing a bunch of responsibilities at them at the state level that involve the state government. I uh, will not be offended whatsoever, again, if anybody else would like to do this, but I will. I will do my best to find the time to submit all the necessary paperwork. Again, stating no. I, I will. I will offer as a previous secretary of CENTCOM and current acting today um, that if you require assistance with anything, I will lend you a hand. This might be. <laughs> but having just been appointed to two more committees, I can't take I the position myself. I know. All right. You think they'll do a good job, Chris? Uh, he's, he's, yeah, he's, he's, he's not just great. Here, he's a ballot. You can vote for another now. Well, you can vote for another. I just wonder if I have two seconds. Just right. The, the trick would be is if no one wins, I no longer qualify. So. <laughs> Assistant secretary, I'm more than happy <laughs> to help them in the process. Right we don't have a deputy secretary right now. The only uh, deputies that we have deputy treasurer and deputy vice chair. We do not have a deputy secretary. But if you know somebody wanting to get into the party who's good at paperwork or wants to learn, you just let me know. And I'll, I have shorthand. I'll I have shorthand. Man, so. All right, appreciate it, guys. Don't need shorthand. Don't need Yay! Shorthand. Thank you so much. We now have two vacancies of in the executive committee. Uh, 
for at-large members. These at-large members must be um, members of the Central Committee. Mr. Nana. I have a nomination. Oh, I am opening nominations. Go right ahead. I nominate Drake Lundstrom. Second. Accepted. Drake Lundstrom. Everybody can vote on this. And the question is, how do we want to conduct this election? Because no, it has to be an option, so we're going to have to do like an open vote. Across that bridge. Well, just do a roll call. I mean, everyone can say... Drake, Noda, abstain. I guess it'll, it'll depend on how many people we got. So yeah. 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 Let's burn that bridge when we cross it. Oh, wait. What? Cross the bridge when we come to it? Are there other nominations? Is anyone seeking to be recognized? <laughs> Anyone online have interest in so, being so, Mr. Craig Hauser, do you have interest in being an at-large member of the executive committee? I'd be uh, interested. Shot. Oh. All right. Well, Mr. Craig Hauser, who was that online? Derek. Was Derek? Tafe. So we gotta have. So it's a field race. We gotta have a ballot. Unless you want to retract your nomination. I'm gonna retract my nomination. All right. <laughs> <laughs> So, Derek number two. Okay. Who else is on in? Derek. Derek Tate. Yes, I'm 99% sure. Yes. That was Well, but you can still call in person and say, what are your two votes? Vote twice. So, but it would be it's ranked choice, so they'd have to say one. I guess we could. No, we, we could, you, could, you could vote for Nota twice. You don't have to vote for Nota. <laughs> Yeah. So we can still do right. so voice voice. So two two nominations, two positions, and then a no a name vote on, on, on seat number one oh, and okay. seat number two. Okay. So have you yeah. say your vote order as long as no one says no to Are there any other nominations? Crickets. Arm twisting. No? Okay, we're going to have two votes here. Seat number one, it's Drake Lundstrom, Noda, or abstain. Do you want to Madam Chair? Yeah. So, I hate to do this. Well, go ahead. I, so it is my opinion that this is a field race now. And that's okay. how we have always conducted the at large. Yes. Okay. Um, so, unfortunately, it's a I more think challenging. We, yeah, I, I think we need a ballot. But online can participate on this one. Absolutely. Because they're not, it's not officer. So, Maybe we need to have. We, we, we can just, if they want. Yeah, we can just ask people. To name that. your name your name your people in order. Sure, we could do that, but he's going to have to take a lot of notes. Our, if the people online open up, um... Mark Patel is probably not on our rocket chat right now, unless well, neither somebody... would be the other one. Just, 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 just roll call. Just roll call. Whoa, 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 whoa! Well, Please well, seek to be recognized if you'd like to speak, Mr. Lundstrom. If we do a roll call vote and have people name their order, that will give us the answer because if at least if nine people have Noda as last, both people are accepted. No, you can, yes, sure. Uh, WebEx does have a function, a chat function. So if they can type into chat uh, if they want to. WebEx say, chat, or, there it is. Yeah, are there. Can, I don't know what he is on for WebEx. Are there two oh. nominations for two open seats? Hold on. So yes. So yes. then, why would there be a field race? Why can't one run for no, one no. and one no, run for the, the other? Third candidate. None of the above. No, no. Always on all of our ballots. <laughs> so Nana. number three. Mr. Nana. I just, I think we have to make a ballot. Okay. But no, and, and it's up to you guys. I mean, yeah. We can't roll call for a three candidate race. Yeah, you, you can. can. Yes, you can. Okay. I'm not going to challenge it. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not a do you want to just say another three people that you want. Do you want to? We need to do a lot of writing then. That's what I'm saying. Hey, you're gonna make this is gonna write. suck. Well, oh, just just write what what were the what are our first letters of our names? Or, well, my, 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 my sheet is already getting really. Oh, okay. Yeah. Can we print you I got it. One of those? Trisha's, okay, Trisha's got it. I got it. Okay. Um, our ballot is going to look. Can we have? You want, you want to print it for the room? For, then? for the room. Let's print them for the room. Oh, that'll save you some time. And it'll save us some time. 
I, is anyone uh, online going to object to that? Because why are we doing secret and they're not? Oh, no, it's not, it's not, it's not secret. secret. It's it not won't be secret. I think, oh. So we can just do the roll. It only matters if Nona's going to win. The roll should be just as fast. Yeah. We just want to make sure we do it. Let's uh, uh, just do a voice vote. Okay. Yeah. Your choices. Order, please. Your choices. <coughs> are Drake Lundstrom, Derek Tafe, and none of the above. Please pick two. You can pick Nota twice. You can pick Nota twice. No, we're not. We're not that way. You can no, not vote. vote. Well, no, you can not vote. As soon as you say Nota. As soon as you say Nota, then. Nota, that's it. That's it. Okay. So you can, up to two choices you have. Up to two choices. You can vote for one and not the other. You can vote for Nota. You can vote for two people. Okay, does everyone understand what we're doing here? Up to two votes you have. Okay, I'm gonna start calling the names of the people online. I'll, I'll, I'll do the, I'll handle the in-person ballots if you can handle the online. Okay, Joshua Toms. Mr. Toms, do you understand what's going on? Are you still here? You might have watched over the computer. Jay Steinmetz. I'm here. Okay, please cast your up to two votes. I vote for both nominated candidates. Can I have the names again so I can say them? Drake Lundstrom and Derek Tate. How are you ranking them? I, I have to rank them for two open positions? For the minutes, yes. Just, 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 uh, for position one, I rank Derek first and the uh, the other one second, and, for, and the reverse for the other two, for the other open position. Okay, thank you. Just say the names in the order you want them. Say the names in the order that you want them. What are the Derek and Derek and Drake? Derek and Drake. I vote yes on both. And one, two in that order. Jeff Sweber. I think he said. Uh, I think he said he had to leave at twelve forty-five. I think he believed he said in his Carl chat. Carl Farnham. Carl Farnham. Uh, I vote for uh, Drake Lundstrom and uh, Derek Taft. <clears throat> or Derek Taft, sorry. Dyrone Smith. I vote for Derek and uh, Drake Lundstrom. <laughs> Thank you. Derek Tate. Uh, Derek and Drake. Mark Pratella. Lundstrom and Tafe. Jason Sunshine. One vote for Derek Tafe, one for none of the above. Did I catch everyone online? Dyrone, Dyrone, are you, did you do it? Yes, you did. Uh, who was missing? Did, I, did, I, did I not Tom. hear? Yes, uh, Drake one, Derek two. Okay, in, in the room we have nine for Drake Lundstrom as number one and two, or nine for Derek Tafe as number two. Online. 
We have Drake Lundstrom as number one. Three, Drake as number two. Three, Derek is number one for two, and Derek is number... Derek or Drake, sorry. I said Derek twice. Okay, Drake. Let's do Drake first. Okay. One, two, three for number one. For Drake. For Drake. Drake as number two, one... Two, three. So three and three. Three and three. Okay. There was one nota. Only six people online voted. Seven people voted. Uh, Derek is number one on one, two, three, and number two on one, two, three, four. It's a secretary. No. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Congratulations to our two new at large members. Appreciate the next meeting will be taking place on October 23rd at 9 a.m. here and online by the usual means. So if it if it matters, Drake took the first cell. Yes. And it doesn't really matter. It really matters. matters. When was the next meeting again? October twenty the third at is nine. This is for Sent this is exec com though, right? Not yeah. Executive right. committee. Yes. Our Sentcom's not executive committee. Until it's gone. the end of the election of this uh, executive committee vacancies. Uh, yes, I apologize. I must. I must leave now, guys. Um, I'll see you next meeting. I appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Uh, the only thing left is there anything that the resignation of the person that would have to show up for abdication. Abdication. Abdication for the good of the party. Yes, uh, Jessica Pettigrew uh, has abdicated her seat. She has not shown up uh, for at least three meetings now. So, does that require a vote, no. folks? No. no it's, it's, it's automatic. I think it's automatic. Unless anyone wants to challenge the ruling of the chair. That Unless anyone wants to challenge the ruling of the chair, that's fine. Um, but I think it's by operation of bylaws, she has 